Hey everybody, I'm Adam Ruzzo. Welcome to my off-grid cabin up by Algonquin Park in Ontario, Canada. Let me show you around. Come on in. It's uh, taken me quite a few years to build this place. I've been here about four or so years now. And I started with just, it, just in a tent I started. And uh, I started cutting all the trees and uh, eventually ended up with enough logs, peeled them all and built this place. So uh, before I did this cabin, I had approximately zero hours experience in woodworking. <laughs> um, basically, I just knew I wanted to do this for a whole pile of reasons. And I found somebody in town that really knew their stuff. And uh, the two of us, with some other help as well, really went to town and uh, gradually worked my way up in terms of skills and stuff like that. To the point where me and another guy did all the tongue and groove up here on the ceiling. Um, and that's all local pine, which was really nice. Pretty much everything, everything in here is like super local stuff, which was important to me, you know, building this place. I showed up here in a tent four years ago in the winter time, in a winter tent, and went from there. Um, it's mostly done now, just like little things here and there that I'm pecking away at now. So yeah, four years or so. Yeah, this is the main uh, sitting area here. It's like, I don't know, 10 by 12 feet, something like that. And yeah, it's just a nice place to, to lounge. And in the dead of winter, like when it's minus 30, 35 around here and those really cold days, I usually park myself right here um, with the stove raging and have coffee in the morning. And it's the coziest spot right by the stove. So in my earlier 20s, I, I lived uh, downtown Toronto. And uh, to make a long story short, a lot of things just didn't make me happy about living down there. Always being around that crazy pace. It's fun to visit once in a while, but to live in it all the time wasn't really working for me. So um, I decided to basically walk away from that. When I was like, I don't know, 26, I decided to just take off and travel around Canada. And I ended up in the Northwest Territories, out in the Yukon, Saskatchewan. And uh, I sold my condo that I still had and I took some of that money and just put it into this land and uh, said, you know, like I'm, I'm never going back to like that downtown city life because it's too expensive. It's too stressful. You're in this frame of mind where you're constantly stressing about something. And it was just, it's just like, it's too crazy. I mean, we're only here for a short amount of time. I don't want to give all my life's energy to something I don't really care about in order to make money, in order to have a bunch of comforts. Civilization has become pretty spoiled with all the luxuries we have and once you walk away from some of those, you realize you don't really need all of them. It's really not that big of a deal if you don't have them all. We never really had them all for like thousands of years, so why do we really need all those things now? We don't need them all, you know. Being close to nature like this has been proven to make people happier. I think we have a little bit of a loss of place going on in a city, you know. We evolved in forests, so when you're around trees and animals all the time, it, it you know, puts a smile on your face and makes you feel a little bit more at ease. Yeah, so here's the kitchen. Uh, it's deadly simple, you know, like I got a, an old stove actually from one of my neighbors here that was sitting in his garage forever. <laughs> and it works great, it's just a propane stove. So being off grid, you wanna use as little electricity as you can. And propane gas stoves are the best way to do that in terms of cooking. I made these old cupboards, or me and a friend made these old cupboards out of, uh, you know, all the pine tongue and groove you see here on the ceilings. We just kind of reused it and built cupboards out of it. Um, somebody gave me this sink, somebody gave me these tiles, like stuff left over from jobs. And uh, what we're standing in now, this, this main area, was the original cabin. It was just 10 feet by 24 feet. And then I added on another 8 by 24 feet. So. Had I done everything over, I would have put the bathroom a little farther away from the kitchen, but it's really not that bad. So yeah, come on in here. Here's the whole thing. <laughs> um, this is the most unfinished room still of the, the cabin. Um, but uh, the main star of this event is the compost toilet right here. Very easy to use. There's like no odor with this thing. Um, very environmentally friendly. This is a shower and it's, I can finally say it's hot, beautiful running water, which I'm super pumped about. I have awesome hot showers, just totally powered off solar now. I put this place on Airbnb because I, sometimes I'm not around for long stretches and uh, people seem to love it, which is great. So they leave just little birch bark messages all over the place. So 
put them all up. Yeah, so right here, the first guests we ever had actually stay here. Um, they actually drew a really good picture of the cabin, which was bang on, and it's just, yeah, one of my favorite messages on this whole thing. I quickly learned after being in like 10 by 24 uh, that it'd be nice to have just a little extra space, you know, nothing crazy. So decided to build a porch, which is just over here through this door. Um, this was once the outside, of the building, but um, it's so much nicer having this extra little bit of space out here. Uh, it's only like eight by 24 feet. And then over here is kind of the mission control of the uh, place. Here's my solar setup. It's very simple and small. Uh, you know, a lot of people have a lot more battery juice because they're, they're using like all kinds of modern appliances. I don't have a dryer or a dishwasher or washing machine and that stuff here. So um, I use a lot less power just from those things alone. Uh, but anyways, um, this is a wonderful charge controller right here. I'm glad I got an MPPT charge controller because it really makes the most of all the power you use. It's from Renogy and so far it's been great. Um, little battery charger here. Oh, on, you know, long winter days which are dark, if I really need to keep the batteries happy, I, uh, I turn the generator on and that's hooked up to the generator. Inverter is up there, just a thousand watts, you know. If I use anything big, like, you know, a big table saw or something, or like a vacuum or whatever, I'll just run the Jenny. Um, these are the batteries down here. Um, they are AGM gel batteries. And um, they're about 185 amp hours each. So I think that's about 370 amp hours that I've got. And they've been great. Like, with when I'm running the fridge, the hot water, charging all my stuff uh, with the odd light on. Uh, I haven't gone below 50% capacity in the batteries yet. So uh, it's plenty of power for me. Uh, and powering this whole system is 600 watts of panels. So day in, day out, it seems to work really well, you know. After you're on solar for a while, you learn to live with uh, the cycles of the sun around here. All right, and upstairs we got a little loft here, so uh, yeah, the only way to get up is by the ladder <laughs> right here, so I'll take you up there, come on up. Yeah, so here we are in the loft. A uh, couple things I want to mention about this. First off is that when we built it, uh, we built walls up here. There's not just like an A-frame roof over your head, so you're banging your head every two seconds. Like we actually built walls on top of the logs. And now there's tons of room up here as a result, which is great. When I built the bed, I wanted it to be nice and high to store stuff. So I got like these two big drawers under here. And they're all made out of the boards that came from uh, the local man's house. Some of my favorite things I got here is like an old school map of Algonquin Park, you know? has a cool little item. I forget where I even found that, but I got a lot of old things like that kicking around up in the shelves here. Some other cabin essentials. Uh, Farley Mowat, of course. You gotta have Farley Mowat books in your cabin. Great Canadian writer of all things wilderness. Alright, let me show you around outside now. Come on down. You get used to this ladder after a while. Welcome to the great outdoors. We're gonna check out my fire pit in the big rock over this way. Um, yeah, come follow me here. So this is my favorite view of the whole place. This big old rock. Um, who knows how long it's been sitting here. I certainly didn't put it there. I think it's a glacial erratic. I'm not a geologist, but all I know is that after the ice age, all the glaciers receded from this area of the world and left giant boulders like this scattered everywhere around this region. And I think that's one of them, I'm pretty sure it is. And it's probably been sitting there 10,000 years or something like that. If you really want to do it, just get started. Because a lot of people get into your project that really like working with their hands. They'll be interested and if you, know, you treat them well and fairly, they'll be happy to help you. Um, so the main thing is just to get started and to, to move past all the voices that are like, don't do it. Because most people will never understand what it's like to live in something they've built. And the simple pleasures and satisfaction of living this way is something that most people can never understand. So if you really want that, just get started. Uh, so the other project I have on the go right now is converting my van. Um, I've basically taken all the skills I learned at the cabin here uh, and 
you know, transferred into something much smaller, which is just the van and all the little woodworking tips and skills I, I learned, I just put into that. I, I travel quite a bit. You know, I play music around and uh, I like being on the road and I like camping and uh, I love freedom. So a van converted to a comfortable thing is a good vessel to giving you that freedom. So I'll show you the van, come this way. So this is the van, uh, it's a Chevy Astro van from 2005 and it's a cargo van, uh, it has no windows on it other than like the front and it's got two little side view mirrors to see everything out of. Um, but yeah, come take a look inside here. So welcome to the van, the Nancy as I call this van. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, this is... Um, this is what I've been working on over the last little while, just with uh, you know old wood I had lying around and some wood I bought new. But so here's the little kitchen. Um, I splurged on this piece of birch, birch plywood uh, to make a, like a nice countertop. It's really bright. And I put a lot of ferrothane on it to make it kind of shiny and um, uh, water resistant. And uh, all this is just cedar tongue and groove. Now cedar tongue and groove is normally expensive, but this stuff I bought at. A local mill that was just like uh, you know it was cuts that weren't very good and they were cheaper so I got them for pretty cheap and um, this is my little battery reader here <laughs> uh, it tells me what my battery is I have solar hooked up to the van as well so I have some power in here not a ton but I've got like 90 amp hour battery in here um, I made you know in a small space you got to make the most of it so I made these these little leaves everywhere I'm still working on this but you know this little thing here See, so yeah, still working on it, but uh, yeah, you got to be creative with the space. So um, I got that one, then I got this one here. You know, just for extra kitchen space. Um, and the sink, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just a salad bowl, like one of those mixing bowls. And I drilled a hole in the bottom and uh, I found some fittings lying around that I had and just, you know, fastened everything together and uh, it all drains into a little jerry can down there and uh, that's my gray water um, and here I got some uh, storage space you know got a little propane cylinder down there propane tank uh, and I don't have a fridge but I've got a freezer or a, a cooler my mistake uh, right here one of these little old guys and you know it, Put insulation on top just to do extra stuff like that to make it a bit better for holding the cool in there. And I insulated this whole box in here as well with some leftover insulation I had from the cabin. So this fan is very insulated. Uh, I use a combination of three things. Spray foam, then I put pink insulation, I think it's half inch, everywhere I could. And I doubled it where I could. And then over top of that I left a little gap and I put Reflectix. The insulation is that thick in this whole wall that I built behind the seats. So. You could like live in this in Canadian winter, I think. I might try it, but I haven't tried it yet. But it's very insulated. This is like an inch thick. So, um, yeah, it's nice and nice and cool in the summer and nice and warm in the wintertime. So there's a fantastic fan. Um, and last but not least is the pull-out bed. The frame comes out like that. And you just pull that down. And you can lie right down on it like that so at night you can sleep totally totally legs stretched out no cramping up it's very cozy in here and you can get up like this and you can brush your teeth right into the sink so um, yeah I'm still like uh, I still have some finishing touches to do on the van but um, it's pretty much done now a lot of the stuff's pretty much done um, and I'll show you where I do the solar stuff too in the back I actually built built a wall back here just to separate, like, I'm gonna have all my, some instruments back here, my music gear. Um, so it's a place that you can put stuff away, you know, that it's not in sight all the time, right? Um, and this is all the solar stuff up here. And I learned all this by, you know, doing the cabin solar stuff. So it all came in handy. And a lot of this, these wires are just reused from the cabin stuff that I didn't use. There's a charge controller up there. Um, there's the fuse box, which runs the fan and the light. And that's all hooked up 
and this all runs down to the good old battery. It's a 90 amp hour flooded lead acid battery. All right, so it's starting to get a little buggy and dark out here, so let's go have a fire, shall we? I'm just sharpening the spindle now for this friction fire kit. So that's gonna be the part that's going like that. So I'm trying to make it as sharp as I can. So yeah, this is how fire was made thousands of years ago and four thousands of years uh, right in this area uh, with the Bodro. All you needed was, you know, some sticks, some wood, and this would have been uh, like some kind of a natural cordage made out of like a plant fiber, but um, I'm cheating, so. <laughs> Here we go, we'll see what happens. My main living has been music for a long time now. 14 years, really. Maybe even longer if you count all the teaching I did when I was in high school. Um, and actually, I, I wouldn't really call music a living. It's really more vocational. It's like what I'm always thinking about, what I'm doing all the time, and it's like my driving force in life. That's why to a lot of people, they don't get me because they're like, well, why aren't you doing this, this, or this? Well, because I'm really just thinking about the next album all the time. <laughs> Art is kind of a calling. If you're a creative person, you can't, it's hard to put you into the nine to five or even the regular economy because you're always thinking outside the box and connecting the dots that way. So living this way has allowed me to explore that side of myself without going flat broke. And it gives me the time to create things and work on music. Being out in nature, you're way closer to that source of creativity, I find, being in solitude. And when you're out in nature, I mean, this is semi-wilderness out here. It's not, it's not wilderness, really, this very spot we're in, but it's close enough to it. Um, but uh, yeah, having that solitude is amazing for creativity because if you don't have that solitude, you can't get in touch with that real creative source that's lying under all the distractions and all the crap of modern day life. Yeah, so this song is kind of my ode to the land. Ode to the land, uh, untamed. It kind of describes, uh, it's kind of a sentiment to the vast area, you know, that's basically north of Toronto and underneath Thunder Bay. It's kind of the central Ontario area um, that I've traveled a lot in and uh, have become very fond of. Uh, so I call it Untamed. Thank you. 